What's good, Mafia Nation? It's your boy, DJ Scale. We're out here uh, doing some stuff, and uh, this guy over here is, uh, what's your name? I'm Mags. Okay. <laughs> so we're here to do a music video review for you. It's not Let's a music video, but okay. That's sure. Let's get it. It's so I don't want to hear anything from you. Because there are times that they played the, the song that we're about to listen to after this. And we're checking out Sabaton History today, <laughs> which is not Sabaton music video. It's not the same. It just has Sabaton music in it at parts. Uh, this is going to be the Swedish Pagans, Vikings, and the Rus. The yes. Rus. Uh, Russ, I, I assume it's Russ, but it's how am I feeling? Okay, cool. Anyways, uh, this is like, I listen, so I, I'm going to fight for this the entire video, just a heads up. This is just as entertaining to me as the music. I didn't say it wasn't entertaining. So it's, it's a music video. There's music in it. It's still... It's, <laughs> there's music in it, some parts. There's a video. It's a music video. <laughs> We're going to get to this. But first, go ahead and subscribe for me. Smash that notification bell. And like, comment, and share to everybody. So they can all do the same. All right. I'm so excited about this. Like, I literally look forward to these things all the time. Oh, yeah. Diggity, diggity. And get to learn more about the Vikings. You gotta click the screen. You gotta do this stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special treat in store for you today. I am sitting right now with one of the best guitarists in Sabaton. And that's me, Tommy Johansson, and you are watching Sabaton History Channel. Yeah, this is the first one I've seen with uh, the Tommy? guitarist, yeah. yeah. That seemed like a, an, an introduction, like, like he hadn't done it yet, so this might be... Look at those boats, yo. Long ships. Long boats. Long yeah. Long it gladdens me to know that Odin makes ready the benches for a banquet. Soon we shall be drinking ale from the curved horns. The champion who comes into Valhalla does not lament his death. I shall not enter his hall with words of fear upon my lips. The gods will welcome me. Death comes without lamenting. Eager am I to depart. The Valkyries summon me home. Those whom Odin sends for me from the halls of the Lord of Hosts. Gladly shall I drink ale in the high seat with the gods. The days of my life are ended. I laugh as I die. Nice. The Saga of Ragnar Lothbrok. <laughs> for a long time. The early history of Northern Europe was shrouded by a fog of mystery. There was a marked gap in knowledge of Europe in the years between the fall of the Roman Empire and the full spread of Christianity. And this era was simply accepted as the Dark Ages, as an era before general literacy, when Northern Europe was ruled by savage and fearsome heathens. Do you know why they call it the Dark Ages? You just said it because they don't know much about it. No, there was a lot of knights in those days. Sorry, that was my worst joke I could tell. I had to pull it off. Uh, <laughs> Get back to the realness of the world. My lord. Northern Europe was ruled by savage and fearsome heathens. Those heathens, however, did leave behind their sagas, their tales of great adventures and battles. Scandinavian archaeologists of the 19th century were confronted with a confusing jigsaw puzzle of burial mounds, cryptic rune stones, and medieval scriptures. But then in 1880, a breakthrough was at hand with the discovery of the Gokstad Mound in Norway Gokstad. in a ship buried a thousand years earlier next to a wow. large pile of shields, swords, and jewelry lay a man that reignited the interest in a long forgotten age. He was huge for his time, over 180 centimeters tall, a chieftain, who had most likely met a violent he was huge for his time at five foot nine how tall are you shane six foot six <laughs> you would have been a giant to these men over a giant centimeters man. tall a chieftain <laughs> who had most all. likely met a violent death in battle the embodiment of a viking you know for a long time scandinavian where's, scholars wait, wait, where's your viking gear at don't you like have like viking jewelry and stuff <laughs> I do, but I didn't know we were doing this today. I'm, I'd be better prepared next time, man. Sorry. <laughs> a 
Viking. You know, for a long time, Scandinavian scholars had seen the Viking Age as the end phase of the Germanic Iron Age. Too little was known to be precise, and even the word Viking was of questionable origin. Most historians refer to the old English word Vikinga, which was repeatedly used to reference warriors coming from the sea in Anglo-Saxon chronicles. It was also the British who gave their history a distinct local Viking age, right? From the first violent raids on their shores in 793 to the Battle of Hastings in 1066. If we asked a Swedish pagan in those times where his origins lay, we might have gotten an answer similar to those we'd get from the Icelandic Edda, a compendium of Norse folktales, that once there was a time where worlds were not only divided by light and darkness, but by deep chasms from which the giants ruled, until Odin, the all-father of the gods, slew the giant Ymir, whose flesh gave birth to the land and whose blood turned into the sea. On their journeys and in war, the pagans looked to Odin for guidance and blessings. He was the god of war, who sends his favor to the bravest of them. But, like the Vikings themselves, Odin was not single-minded. He was also the god of poetry and the god of wisdom. Once he sacrificed his own eye to bring pagans the knowledge of the language of the runes. Such rune stones can still be found all over Scandinavia, and although the pagans were otherwise illiterate, they give us a little insight into important people or local customs. Outside of battle, the pagans honored Thor, the god of thunder. As the patron of the farmers, he rode the sky in his chariot, bringing thunder and lightning down as a sign of power. Scandinavian metal workers crafted jewelry and amulets in the form of Thor's mighty hammer to attract his protective powers. It was the belief of the pagans that the worlds of gods and men were connected, and although the fate of each man had been decided at his birth, the gods could still intervene and change fates along the way. And the northern gods were no super ethical or morally upright beings. They were <laughs> flawed and at times even treacherous and ruthless in the pursuit of their goals. They watched and they cheered as men toiled and struggled and it became the pagan way to live with this feeling of cosmic order and worldly chaos, of predestined fate and yet personal responsibility. Showing Sounds courage, confusing. taking risks, the will to sacrifice, Probably a fine line all of these were essential parts of Norse culture. There was no place for weakness or cowardice because everyday life in Scandinavia was harsh. Far away from the civilizations that had been touched by the Roman Empire, it was hardly the place to sustain a, a laid-back lifestyle. People yeah. stayed loyal to their communities through personal oaths, and laws manifested themselves through societal pressure. Deals, threats and promises had to be made in public so that no party could back out without bringing shame on their name Smart. and their family. In the dark winter months of Scandinavia, each man was obliged to show hospitality to his fellows, which resulted in feasts that often lasted for days. And there, <laughs> poets and musicians, skulls, recited and sang tall tales of their revered ancestors, of the gods and of their heroes. It inspired men to make a name for themselves so that the skulls would one day sing of their deeds as well. Party at Viking House, man! Might even find a way to ascend into the <laughs> halls of the gods party, themselves. <laughs> Life on Scandinavia's video. coast made the Norsemen top-notch seafarers. They invented the keel, which was quite the nautical breakthrough as it allowed ships to cross oceans. Their famous longships were, were sleek and sturdy ships, perfect for traveling large rivers. With such ships, the men ventured out. Some wanted to trade, others sought a new place to live, a few were exiled or on the run, but the bravest, the hungriest of them all, they went viking. The world was laid out in front of them, and it was theirs for the taking. The Danes and Norwegians ventured south and west. With fire and sword, they raided across the Frankish coast and deep into Charlemagne's realm. Here, they became the ferocious Northmen, and their impact on Frankish society was immense. Tall and broad pagan warriors fought and slaughtered their way through northern France. The Christians saw them as God's punishments, as harbingers of the apocalypse. Each successful raid 
attracted more pagans to the Viking lifestyle, though. And especially imposing chieftains became sea kings, lords without a country, but with enough money and power to lead expeditions in pursuit of plunder. Their seemingly endless right. ambitions took them up the River Seine to lay siege to Paris itself. Other sea kings went further west, towards Britannia and Ireland. From the first raids on Anglo-Saxon monasteries to the full-scale invasion, a great heathen army landed in 865 and plundered and raided its way from Northumbria to Wessex and threatened to take over all of England and turn it into Daneland. Heroes larger than life had appeared. Legends like that of Ragnar Lothbrok, Torgil's the Devil, or Ivar the Boneless. Skulls sang of unshakable shield maidens, or the secret warrior brotherhoods, like the Jomsvikings in the Baltic Sea. And another popular tale was that of Rurik and the Rus. While the Vikings from the shores of Denmark and Norway usually traveled westwards, the Swedish pagans went south and east across the Baltic Sea. Archaeological evidence shows that the Swedes had formed colonies in Corland and on the Baltic coast as early as 750. Swedish Vikings soon took over a major fort at Lake Ladoga, which opened the way to the vast river network of Western Russia. But unlike the British or Frankish shores, there were few riches to be found there, no monasteries or wealthy towns to be plundered. So they traveled southward in their sleek longships, sliding down the Volga and Dnieper towards the realms even beyond the Black Sea, laden with goods like amber, swords, honey, tusks, furs, or wax. They sought to exchange them for silver and silks. Most profitable, however, was the slave trade. Captured Slavic girls were sold for high prices in the slave markets of the Byzantine Empire in exchange for Greek or Arabian coin. Navigation down the major rivers was hazardous and the surrounding country treacherous. Semi-nomadic tribes like the Khazars watched the Northmen with suspicion. Many other tribes saw the Vikings as intruders, and there was never a guarantee that even those who had shown them hospitality on the way south might not lay in ambush on the way back. But this right. was the Viking way. Yeah. Scandinavian merchants traveled with their bodyguards, a sworn group of men armed to the teeth and united in their belief that they could only trust each other. The journey was long, and many did not return, but those who did, did so as rich men. The writings of Islamic and Byzantine scholars tell us of these men who called themselves the Rus, or Varangians. Okay. I have seen the Rus as they came on their merchant journeys and encamped by the Volga. I have never seen more perfect physical specimens. Tall as date palms, blonde and ruddy, they wear neither tunics nor kaftans, but the men wear a garment which covers one side of the body and leaves a hand free. Each man has an ax, a sword, and a knife, and keeps each by him at all times. The swords are broad and grooved, of Frankish sort. Every man is tattooed from fingernails to neck with dark green or blue-black trees, figures, etc. It is the custom of the king of the Rus to have with him in his palace 400 men, the bravest of his companions and those on whom he can rely. These are the men who die with him and let themselves be killed for him. Wow. The name Rus probably stemmed from the term Ruotsi, a name the Finns gave the Swedes. It simply translates to men who row, you know, which is, after all, pretty accurate, right? Those Rus traveled from the far north down to Constantinople, which they called Miklagard, the great city. A group of Varangians even served the Byzantine emperor as warriors for hire. <laughs> Others traveled even further down the Caspian Sea towards Baku, the city of fire. That trading route, although very dangerous, was also extremely profitable. Back in Scandinavia, archeologists have found hordes of foreign gold coins and even rings made of ivory. Over time, the Swedish Vikings of the Rus and Varangians built outposts and colonies along the way. They joined forces with the local clans and made alliances against common enemies. Over the decades, the Rus mixed with the locals, adapted local customs, wore their colorful kaftans, and their chieftains called themselves khans. They often converted to Judaism or Christianity, and it was they who eventually laid the foundation for the Kievan Rus, the realm that Russia, Ukraine, and Belarus all claim as their forefathers, their cultural ancestors. Hmm. Nowadays, That's Vikings are more popular than ever. I don't think anyone back in the 19th century would have predicted that early Scandinavian culture 
would rise to such prominence. In fact, I think they would be very, very surprised. <laughs> These heathens? People care about the heathens? Why do you care about them? Which he's not yeah. wrong. Like, if you think about it, like, over the just when we've seen in our lifetime like vikings have become a big part of like culture yeah. and there's like actually whole groups of people that have went back to believing in the viking beliefs and actually worshiped you know the same gods and are taking over modernizing obviously to make oh, it yeah. like they're not sacrificing people like the the vikings and the nordic people that did. you know of. that i know of but yeah, they've modernized it and taken it back over. And like, I don't, like you said, I don't think anybody expected that because back then to them, they were just heathens and bloodthirsty. Yeah. 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 Vikings. Very surprised. So Tommy... First of all, I gotta say, it's a real honor for me to be able to sit here with, literally, I mean, we're not kidding, one of the best guitarists in Sabaton. I, I mean, I, I, this, I can't imagine how you feel. It's a joke. Can you? Yeah. Because it's an awesome feel, and it's great to have you on the show. Um, I, I hope it wasn't too much trouble flying in and all with COVID and stuff. And, you know, well, take... it was a bit of a hazard, but I mean, I'm here now. So it's all in the past. I'm just glad to be a part of the show. Well, and it's also because it's a special episode. That's why we wanted something really special. Because, now you might not know this, but this is actually true. Swedish Pagans is likely, I haven't counted, but every single time people write Swedish Pagans, I think it's probably, possibly the most requested song that we do an episode about. Really? Really, which is wow. interesting because it's a you know a bonus track. Yeah, I didn't know that. Well, how do you feel about the song? Yeah. Well, it's one of the most requested songs live. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, but w why is that? Why do you think people have this thing for it? Well, because it's a great song. And it's. I can't no more. Hey, I hey. can't no more. Hey, Chad. <laughs> hey, wake up. He's snoring, man. <laughs> We're in the middle of a video. Go back to sleep, buddy. <laughs> I didn't know what it was at first. I was going to be so vibrating. I thought I heard the dog, and then and I, I feel like there was a dog that had jarred. There was a dog in this video. There was a dog. But then I didn't know what that was. I was I th and then I thought, I immediately was like, all right, so the dog calmed down and just passed out. I mean, he's just like right above us on the floor, and I can hear him. <laughs> And then it started getting really loud, and I'm like, oh, that, yeah, mm -hmm. that's got to be in this room. <laughs> that's got to be close by. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Right here. Sorry it was such a late night last night. <laughs> Let's get back to this. <laughs> oh, I missed something, because now there's... No, 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 it was a really well, awkward moment. it's a great song. Yeah, yeah, nope, I remember this part. <laughs> hmm. And it's a great song. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, then why is it a bonus track then? Why wasn't it a, a, a proper track? Well, <clears throat> to be completely honest, Indy, yeah. I was not a part of Sabaton when that song was written. But you must know the tales whispered on the night winds. And those tales are legends. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, so make well, one up. <laughs> oh, okay, <clears throat> so here, here it is. Uh, they thought that this song, no one is gonna like this song. Really? So, but yeah, but we recorded the song, so they put it on the uh, on the on the album as a bonus track. And thought, well, no one will recognize this song or re remember this song or even listen to it. But then people start to listen to it, and the rumors are starting to spread all over the the land about yeah. this one song, the song of all songs, called Swedish Pagans. And it reached the crowd during a Sabaton show. Someone in the distance, the singer of all songs, would sing, oh, oh, oh and oh. people would turn around and say, hey, I know that melody yeah. from that bonus track. And they start to sing along. And the band on stage were standing there like, what, they're singing this song? Yeah. This bonus track? What is this? And do we know that song? Yeah, sure, okay, let's play it. Yeah. And from that day on, the song was played on every Sabaton show, almost. Great tale. Great tale. Yeah. But yeah, that would surprise me too. Like a bonus track. Just how 
having a, a bonus track people just out of nowhere that you didn't think that anybody would like the song and then they just start chanting it on their own and you're just like uh, uh yeah uh, yeah so it, it be, being on stage and and people singing your song back to you is, is a really really empowering moment and it really I, it, it blew my mind the first time i was on stage and people sang back to to us as metal mafia um but I couldn't imagine it being something that literally we put in the background, like whatever. Like nobody's gonna listen to that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because we, we, you know, as artists, sometimes you get those songs where you're just like, yeah, I'm, I'm not a hundred percent comfortable with it, but it's here. Let's put it on there. Yeah, yeah. Filler. I mean, we usually call those filler. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Because in your head, you picture them one way, and then you actually get them recorded, and you're just like not as impressed with it as you thought, but. But somebody else might might really love that situation. And yeah. Apparently, they, they got proved with that exact situation there. The song was played on every Sabbath and show. Almost. Almost. It's a heck of a crowd, man. So when you joined the band, what was the first song, not songs that you guys were coming, new songs, what was the first old song that you had, to, that you learned? Like maybe for a tryout or maybe... To, to... I don't remember because, I mean, I was listening a lot to Sabaton. I thought you were going to say, I was really high. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy says, no, the new hashtag. Yeah. Use it and you will stay away from drugs. Yeah, use yeah. that hashtag to stay away from drugs. Yes. I'm glad we had this time. <laughs> so anyway. Oh, okay, uh... yeah. Uh, so I knew a lot of Sabaton songs, actually. Um, I don't remember because I got all the songs and they told me to listen to these guitar files uh, because I had Tobes guitars. Sure. Uh, so I listened to them and sort of played, learned the songs. But most of them I, I knew already, right. the, the basics for. But I think the one I really started to learn, you know, properly was the, the, to learn the proper way how to play it was uh, Atero Dominatos. Okay. Wow. Well, cool. Yeah, because it's uh, one of my one of my favorite yeah. Sabaton songs from the old days. So I learned to play that. And <clears throat> to be honest, I listened to the guitar parts on Prima Victoria <laughs> and I realized, okay, I know this one already. So I didn't even practice that one. Okay. Uh -huh. Because I knew it already. But, but And when you started doing songs like Atero Dominata, old, older songs and stuff, would you be required to play like the original solos note for note? Or did you get to do your own? Or did you do come to some compromise? Or how did that work? Well, it was kind of a compromise because I listened to the original songs, yeah, and then I listened to how Tube played the right. songs, how the, how we played the solos, and how we did certain parts, and I realized, okay, here he plays like the original, so I should stick to that, right? And here he plays something completely different, so so I could either play what he does or do something new. Well, that's pretty cool. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, b because some solos from the old songs are very, you know, very nice, They're very cool solos. We don't need to change it. Yeah. But then maybe when they're doing something fast, Tube did something different, and I feel okay. I can I can space out here and do. Something I, well, it's nice to have some freedom. I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously freedom. You have it on the songs that you yeah. are the first guitarist. Uh, yeah. Stuff. And you know what's surprising? I mean, as many people will know, especially just by looking at you and by your hair, you come from a smoky jazz background, like jazz flute and stuff, right? Uh, so yeah. I thought that was kind of cool that they asked you to play guitar of all instruments. <laughs> you know? Yeah. No, did you get it to his face? He was just like, what? jazz flute? No, especially just by looking at you and by your hair, you come from a smoky jazz background, like jazz flute and stuff, right? Uh, so I thought that was kind of cool that they asked you to play guitar. Of all what is he talking to me yeah. about? Um, uh, hashtag Tommy plays flute. Hashtag Tommy plays flute. And we can probably get some pictures of him playing flute. <laughs> <laughs> so listen uh, being in a band i completely understand what's going on here now and it is funny because apparently tommy is the guy that people pick on in the band he must be the new guy which is happens so that's, that's, how, that's how it goes but i fully respect all of all of the hilarious things that are going on right now uh and i appreciate you let's get back to uh to, to tommy playing the flute using him playing flute But Swedish pagans, obviously, you're 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 from Norland. Yes. You know, you're big sort of hairy Viking guy. Hashtag Viking guy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, okay, now 
it's interesting how the world looks at you know the whole Viking period and the yeah. period coming. Uh, how would that compare with how Swedes see it themselves? Because well, the world sees horny helmets. <laughs> well, I mean, Swedes are very proud of the Vikings, that Vikings that came from the north, yeah. you know, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, the, yeah. the Vikings. Uh, we're very proud of what we accomplished, but we it's like we don't talk about the bad things the Vikings did, <laughs> you know, and they plundered and they stole and raped and killed and murdered. So we, we don't talk about that. Yeah. We always talk about how big we were and how yeah. strong <laughs> and long hair and I we mean, don't we don't talk about that. TV show Vikings. Yeah. That's how we see that how Sweden looks at Vikings today. It's like, yeah. yeah, that's how we were cool and we had a cool hairstyle and <laughs> lifestyle and that was so <laughs> awesome. And then people start to start to ask us. But yeah, you, you, you do know that they were kind of you know, bad people. They were yeah. murderers and they, they it killed was just turning people. up saying, hi, can we borrow your houses and cities for 300 years? Yeah, exactly. It's okay if we take your daughter to this room, there's like 50 of us. Is that okay? No, I don't think they did that. Yeah. No. Uh, we don't usually talk about that. Okay. But we know that it happened. But here on Sabbath on History, wow. we cover all aspects of the history I know. in I know. the songs. Exactly. Well, Tommy, um, from, from, since I am now a Swede, from yep. one Swedish pagan to another, thanks for being my guest here as one of the best guitarists in Sabbath. He just keeps I'm saying so it. Glad to have I feel he's being sarcastic at this point. Absolutely. Insert photo of why. <laughs> so glad to have Tommy as a guest right here on Sabaton History. Glad to be here. <laughs> you gotta love when they haze them, man. Yeah. Their drum riser the tank. Yeah, I love seeing this show. They got like the the things in the barbed wire. Like they made it, literally made it look like a, a war scene at the bunker with the what is it called with the sandbags? Uh, it, uh, 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 what? A bunker? Yeah. No, the sand, sandbags. 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 They use for a barricade. Maybe. I have no idea. I was just gonna make mention that they would like like. The space between the two sets of uh, barbed wires is called no man's land usually. So like the crowd is no man's land, that's kind of fun. Yeah. Thank you everybody for watching and thank you everybody for supporting. Wow, his beard has gotten bigger. Click the bell, mm -hmm. subscribe mm -hmm. and become a patron. Thank you very much. Time ghost. Time ghost. Space ghost, coast to coast. But no, um, I forget what it's called. But like, basically, it's it's like right in front of the tr like right in front of the trenches where they have those sandbags that they use as a wall to stop the bullets. Barricade. Sure, barricade. Sure, why not? I don't know. I'm I'm dumb. It happens either way. It was cool. I feel like you I know, knew I most of those things. Thinking about what it is now. I'm sorry. I just keep thinking, wanting to say rampart. You guys know, let us know. Yeah. Either way, I, I don't, it was a good video. I just knew, I knew a lot of the stuff already. I, I, I didn't know quite a bit of it. Like, I didn't realize that, like, like that Odin had, like, sacrificed his eye so mm -hmm. that the people could understand the runes. Like, I didn't know, uh, uh, a couple of different things about Odin was, was kind of interesting to me. But, like, I knew quite a bit about the Viking thing, too. Yeah. Well, the Odin thing and everything like that, I've dived into a little bit more because, as you know, my woman is really into the Viking thing and wants to have a Viking wedding. And so I felt like before I jumped into that, I needed Viking to learn. Viking wedding. Yeah, it's going to be out in the woods and everything. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. So I, I felt a DJ. like... A... <laughs> I know a DJ. So do I. He snores when he sleeps. <laughs> but um so yeah i mean i already deep dived into a lot of that i thought they were gonna go into more details about like a specific person or battle but well i mean like well like he said though like there's not much known about it like it's just it's just hearsay it's what the it's what when they would get together in the parties and everything like that and they would talk about it and they would sing about it like it's whatever they told the story of yeah. so like 
you don't really have accurate depictions of what happened because that's what i was hoping that they did <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think they, I mean, either way still cool video love to hear the song i'm mean, gonna get for a little bit we're, about we're, we're getting it next we're, we are getting yeah, that next so keep you guys wait. eyes peeled for that but if you guys have any other recommendations let us know in the comments below hit us up on the discord or if you want to bump to the top of the list make sure you check out the donation link in the description below affirmative and just below that donation link there is a little link for the duds you can buy the clothes you can buy the shirts the hats the thing. i don't know if we have any hats I don't know. We need hats. We need hats. If we, we don't, if we don't, you have need them. hats. So check out that link and see if we have them. If we don't have them, they're coming. Mm -hmm. Sure. Check out any of our social medias we have scrolling below. Get to know us out. <laughs> Electric jazz hands there. Uh, yeah, get to know us outside the reaction world as a band and as people and all the fun things we do behind the scenes. Because I promise, there's lots of it. So make sure you check it out and hit us up on there. I am a people. I, uh, <laughs> I'm a people. No, you're not. Don't lie to the people. That's the behind the scenes. He's not really a person. You get to see him taking off his human face and revealing what he really is. If you want to, you want to see what Shane really is behind the scenes, you just have to check out that social media. But thank you guys again for watching. Until next time.